This is my 1998 BMW 318iS, four-cylinder, twin-cam, five-speed. It's done 240,000 K. When I got it about five years ago, the clutch slipped under absolute full power. Now it's slipping under about 90% power, so it's about time I changed the clutch. I ended up making three videos. One on changing the clutch in your driveway using only axle stands and floor jacks. One on the what's involved in going from a heavy dual mass flywheel to a lightweight flywheel. And one on doing the starter motor brushes since I did that while I was at it. Would I change the clutch again this way using axle stands and floor jacks? Well, yes, if I had to. Um, a hoist would make it much easier and quicker, but only if I had access also to a high-level uh, gearbox jack uh, or someone else to help me lift the gearbox out and uh, lift the exhaust off, because they are heavy. I was actually offered the use of a workshop hoist over a weekend, but I declined because I wasn't sure how long it was going to take me, in particular swapping the dual mass flywheel for a lightweight one. Uh, and I really didn't want my car to be stuck there on Monday morning in the way of all the proper workers. So what other bits have I got? So the cheapest thing to do was buy a new clutch slave cylinder with push rod. Quite economic. Um, the rest of the bits. Uh, new set of flywheel bolts is recommended. Those are 50mm bolts. Um, while the gearbox is off it is suggested to replace the crankshaft rear oil seal. You can do that in situ and a new seal is quite cheap. It comes complete with a guide for putting it on. Ditto for the crankshaft spigot bearing the gearbox input shaft fits into. And while I've got the starter motor out, because it's easy, it's reached from underneath they say, might as well give it a new set of brushes about ready for um, them, I would think, by now. It's done 240,000 k's or something. Yeah. I've also got a new little clutch release pivot bearing that fits inside the bell housing. Can't lay my hands on it at the moment, but I'll show a picture of that when I find it. So, here's our new brass one. Okay, so I need to jack it up about a foot or 18 inches. Should be enough, one way or another. Well, that's pretty well as high as my jack stands will go at the front. Back is slightly lower, but that's okay. Second thoughts, I raised the back a little bit further, and that's as pretty well as high as my jack stands go, at the front at least. I've got an extra prop under the front cross member just in case it, uh, a jack stand collapses or something. And I'll stick a trolley jack under the rear diff while I'm working on the car too, just in case. So that gives me 16 inches, 40 centimetres clearance to get the gearbox out. That should be enough, I hope. Okay, those axle stands don't look terribly convincing. A bit skinny. <coughs> so I made some more 
wooden timber props just in case the axle stands decide to give way since we're going to be taking the starter out we disconnect the battery which in this car is in the boot trunk there For convenient access we take out the dipstick and bolt the dipstick tube from this nut here. I've done it already. And gently pull out the dipstick tube. It takes a fair bit of a pull when it's actually inserted. Right. And that gives easier access to the starter which is hidden hidden down there. When I say the starter is hidden down there, it's actually in here under the inlet manifold. You can find it by feel a lot easier than I can see it. I just got to unbolt the wires off the starter motor. Which are at the end of my fingers. Hmm. I think it's easier to get those after I've undone the starter motor bolts, <coughs> which I am going to do from underneath since I've got to get under the gearbox anyway. <coughs> officially, to get at the starter motor, you remove all this lot. And if I didn't wish to get under the, under the car, that's what I would do. Since I am getting under the car, apparently I can get away without removing all that pot. So that is what I will try. Right, exhaust flange first. Those are 15mm nuts. And I have previously squirted them with CRC. You need a long socket to get on the wall. Yeah, we can get a straight line to the wall. Well done BMW for that. I won't take this off yet, though that's the next item. Because when these are off, this will conveniently drop down, bonk and rest on there while I can do the rest. So once I started them with this, they all came off quite easily with this. Okay, there's an oxygen sensor somewhere, that will be it. And it just unplugs, and there's a plug there. Because that's another thing clipped to the side of the gearbox there, so I guess that will just pull out of its clip that which makes it easier to unplug the plug. That square one isn't the one you take apart. The one beyond it, that one that fitted into there. That's the one that comes apart easiest. Okay. Okay. Rear brackets. On the other side. <coughs> Apparently these clamps just sit in rubber. So if I pull that well to one side, you can now see the nut. We can now get on the nut. Okay, that's what we'll do. And off it came. So now it's all hanging on a rubber down there. Pretty much. And I can undo that and pull off the bolts at the front. 
I think I'll stick a box under here so it doesn't drop down with a crash. Oh, and there's one more bracket here that I forgot about. Just undo that. So I just took this whole bracket right off. Undo that, and loosen that. Undo that, undo that. It sort of wriggles off. Yeah, that rubber hook there should unhook and then the whole thing will flop down. It's monstrously heavy, that exhaust. I just stuck a floor jack underneath it so I can get the rubber clip off. And it did just pull off the front. It's just resting on the crossbar there. So, if I remove the blocks from under the back end and give a good tug, it should come out. We'll see what happens. Okay, this thing weighs 29 kilograms. Sixty four pounds. That's bloody heavy for an exhaust system. That's the cross brace. Cross brace. Next thing is the heat shields. There's two of them. There's a very, very long one. And then there's a small one that goes up the side of the tunnel. Here. And that'll have to come out too because it's in the way of the gearbox cross member bolts. So just a lot of M10 mm bolts to undo, I think. So the front heat shield comes off with three of these little pressed steel nut things, 10 mil socket. And the main shield comes off with a half dozen 10 mil screws. I'm going to scrape all that bloody tarry chip seal off the, off the shield before I put it back on the car. Okay, now the cross brace here. Now. Front flange or as a rubber joint. There are nuts there, or bolts there, there are nuts there. No way I can get a spanner on it with this in the way. So what I'm gonna to have to do, that's the gearbox main cross member, what I'm gonna to have to do is put a jack under the sump to stop everything flopping down too far. Then undo this and take off this cross member. Then I can maybe get on those bolts. So that's my littlest jack holding up the rear of the 
sump so the gearbox doesn't flop down. And that's the gearbox cross member. Just 13 mil nuts and bolts. I don't know what BMW's designers were on when they designed this joint, but only an 18 mil open ender will fit on there. Ditto there. Ditto there. A socket won't get through here because that ridge is in the way. A ring spanner won't fit on there or there or there because the bolts are too close to the shaft. Well, this is what it did to my open end spanner. So, since I'm going to have to buy another spanner anyway, I'll try grinding down the ring end of this so it's thin enough to fit through the pissy little clearance between the nut and the shaft and try that end. Okay, so I just ground the end a bit thinner. Now well, let's just see. <sighs> Yeah. Right. Here it goes. This is going to take both hands. Right. I could deduce it wasn't a very high quality spanner anyway. But hell, I've never broken one of them before. Okay, let's see what a nice shiny new 18mm spanner can do. Well, this one, I couldn't get the ring on because it's too close to the back of the gearbox. But I did get the open end on it and it did turn with the open end so maybe those are the ones to undo. Let's see. Yes. Bingo. As it turns out you can get on the heads of these bolts with an 18mm socket. That. These other bolts on the other hand I must take a super fine socket, a thin wall socket because I can't get on those. Now we've got the rear prop shaft range. The bolts fit on from behind, so we just have to use a spanner and whack it with a hammer to loosen them. Okay, so that's 16 millimeter nuts. Actually, I found whacking it with a hammer was futile. The spanner just bounced off. Eventually, I just grabbed the spanner wrench with both hands and pulled very hard, and they came off. 16 mil nuts, by the way. Well, that was the bottom two nuts. Uh, to do the top two, we just rotate the shaft to bring them down to the bottom, so... And break off. Turn the wheel and look under here to see the right time to engage the handbrake again. Like about there. Okay, so now we've got the rear flange there. Undone. So 
so that should just pull off and then the back of the prop shaft will drop down. Then we can undo these two nuts here holding the centre bearing. And in theory these that we have just undone. Yeah this rubber bush we just pull out the back flange of the gearbox. Yeah, in theory, we'll see how it works. Well now that flange levered off okay with the screwdriver. Well that is ridiculously lighter than the exhaust was. 10 kilograms, 22 pounds. About a third the weight of the exhaust. Right, so I just lowered the back of the gearbox a couple of inches by easing the jack under the sump. Only a couple of inches here. You can't go too far or the back of the engine will crush stuff between it and the firewall. So now just to make sure the jack doesn't leak down a little bit more when I'm not looking, I'll just whack the cross member back on temporarily with a couple of long bolts. Okay, so those are my long bolts. They're actually a bit too long, hence the stack of washers to space them up to the right height. So that's that's how much I've lowered the back of the gearbox. So now, just disconnect the gearbox or the gear shift levers. There's a clip there and there's a clip up there. This one just pushes off. Right, so this bar comes out quite easy. A clip at each end. This one on the other hand is a right bastard. There's a clip right up there at the front. Stay rod from the bottom of the gear stick fits in here with this clip. Goes in there through the end of the stay rod, down there, and that tag there snaps over the edge there. Like that. Now, to get it off, you really need to come in from behind with something suitable. Lift and lever, like that. Much easier done when you can see what you're doing. So I think a suitably bent screwdriver or something similar be appropriate when in situ. So it's on. That's off. Oops. 
uh, the slave cylinder. So the slave cylinder can just dangle on its hose. It's not very heavy, but it can't do any harm. And now we have the reversing light switch wiring harness to disconnect. Apparently, God knows where it goes. It, uncl it unclips there. The clip it disappears somewhere up into the never never. Right, the starter motor, I think there's another clip there. One hand. I can feel a little thing that I can push in. Yes. Push thing in. And maybe it all slides off. Well, this is the plug. Uh, it's got a little wire catch there. If you squeeze that in, you can see the you can see the wires at the sides withdrawing, and then it pulls off very easily. So there we are. Tuck that out of the way. This is the reversing light switch that it plugs onto. Little catches there, top and bottom. Just squeeze and the wire clip unclips and it just pulls straight off. Very easy. Now the starter motor. That's the bottom starter motor bolt, which we will reach with a very long extension from behind the gearbox. And it's a Torx type. And it's a Torx type socket. Okay. It appears to be an E14. On a rather long. I've just got extensions stacked up to make it long enough to poke in the side from the rear of the gearbox. So at the back of the gearbox lowered a couple of inches and a sufficiently long extension. You can actually reach in from behind the gearbox and get on all the engine to gearbox bolts. <laughs> you may need a universal for a couple of them. So the starter motor locating dial was seized in its hole of course so the starter didn't, didn't want to come off so I had to screw a couple of the starter bolts these are them, the long ones, back in, part way in, and to use my long extension with my biggest hammer on the other end to encourage it to slide out of its hole and the starter eventually came free. Right, this is where we find if this thing actually works. Here's all the bolts you have to undo. You can get them all with a sufficiently long extension. Maybe with a universal on the end. Above the gearbox, which of course isn't there, but it can line up on every single bolt. They're all Torx headed except for one. 
the three from the bottom of the sump. The small ones come out with a E12 adapter. The others take an E14 adapter, Torx. Two big ones at the bottom of the block. Long big ones. Two at the top of the block, short ones. <sighs> Two smaller ones, but with the same E14 Torx head. That go into the starter motor. There's also a dowel on the bell housing up around here. Obviously bell housing has gone with the gearbox that goes into the starter motor and sticks and that's why it's sometimes necessary to screw those back into the starter motor Get my long extension and hammer the end of it to drive the starter motor off the dowel. And finally, there's a little M10 headed bolt that screws in from the front, just behind the exhaust an ordinary hex head on it that just secures the back plate to the uh, bell housing. Don't forget that one. So that's a total of ten. Just so you can be sure you've got all the bolts before you start trying to pull the gearbox off. Here they are seen from the engine end. You've got two big long bolts here. That's just above the line between the sump and the block. You've got three small bolts from the sump you've got two medium length bolts for the starter and a stud there that's what pretty rusty that's what uh, jammed so I had to drive the starter off I'll clean that up before I put it back on the car and you've got two short large bolts there and one with a normal 10mm head that screws in from just under the exhaust on the motor side. So 10 bolts altogether. And out it comes. 
it's actually the easiest bit. So now I just have to lower it down and see if it'll slide out under the car. Sorry about the noise, it's just the neighbour vivisecting their kids. Uh, the answer is not on the jack, it won't come out under the car. But now I can raise and lower it under control, which is going to make putting it back in a lot easier. And all I'm going to do now is stick a plank under it with blocks each end, take the jack out and then remove the blocks progressively and it should end up approximately at uh, ground level. Sixteen inches, forty centimeters. About the absolute minimum to get that gearbox out. Without sitting on a plank, we'll just slide the plank out. Hopefully. Yeah. Just fits. Okay. So we've got the clutch. The engine back plate here. Which has to stay back there behind the flywheel. Not sure if it will come off. I think it split, so I think it would come off past the flywheel if it had. But it probably doesn't. Get the starter up there. Dual mass flywheel and clutch. Yeah. It turns a little bit about the front turning. Well, no, these are six millimeter. I don't have a real heavy duty set of. Allen keys, hex keys. Let's just see if these will do it. Make it on there. So that's most of these out. It's just hanging on the dowels now. That right went up there somewhere. So I'm leaving this off carefully, ready to catch the weight. Because I don't really want to drop it on myself. Right. It actually took a crowbar. Get that off. I'll loosen those bolts a little bit more and shift it a bit further, bit by bit. Eight big bolts there. I've got a shift. Got to lock the flywheel somehow to do that. So this is just 
a convenient bit of bar bolted it into a clutch mounting hole there I've got another bolt against there I'm going to try to undo this it'll turn and that but in there we'll just hit the chassis there and that will nicely lock everything let's see if it works I'm going to put both hands on it That is locking it, that bar, and it did work. Oof. Right now, I've got all the bolts out. I've got a couple of bolts I left loose there, just on the threads. And the flywheel is actually loose. Okay. That is heavy. Oof. 